Hope all of you can see my screen here. Yeah. So basically what I have here, and just to give you a quick overview of, of, of how I frame this particular scenario, um, basically have a have a data warehouse, okay, essentially just these are the different systems, okay. Now what is the whole point of SSIS? Now I, I understand we talked about SSIS, we talked about ETL, okay. So so the scenario here is, and even before we go into those, 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 those concepts, and the basic scenario that I wanted to talk about here is, um, you have data coming, uh, let's say ABC is a, uh, is, is a multinational finan uh, pharmaceutical company. Okay, ABC is a is a multinational pharmaceutical company, uh, which which produces its own medicines and it basically sells its medicines across different retail outlets. Okay, uh, so let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all the different retail outlets spread across the world for company ABC. And um, the, the, and what it basically ha what it basically means is that uh, let's say retail outlet one is maintaining its its entire sales data in an Excel file. So so what retail outlet one does is at the end of every day, uh, depending on the number of sales that it makes, it basically goes ahead and um, maintains that that track record in an Excel sheet. Like it says, okay, entry number one, invoice day, invoice number so and so, um, medicine name so and so amount so and so that's it simple record but then they maintain that record in an excel file okay uh, let's say retail outlet 2 maintains that data in a sql server uh, they have a sql server database that they maintain retail outlet 3 maintains the data in an oracle database retail outlet 4 can maintain the data in a simple notepad file okay it could be a simple csv kind of format where they maintain that data retail outlet 5 let's say maintain the data in a db2 so what i'm basically highlighting here is that um, uh, different different organizations or different retail outlets here in this case can store data in in different formats, right? Like there's so many different kinds of data formats in which you can store your data, and but the but the end objective is that if if, if company ABC wants to know uh, what was the total sales that that accumulated over the past five years, it, it basically needs to pull in that information across all the retail outlets, right? There has to be a mechanism through which company ABC also knows that information because right now that, that data is maintained individually across the different vendors. Now I understand it's a very uh, simplistic scenario and it's not exactly happens that way, but assuming that you know the other infrastructures are not in place, that, that's how it will happen, right? Because ABC has given us medicines, it will probably have its own record, I agree, but then uh, how, how do you know how much of medicine was actually sold? It has to be a mechanism through which uh, uh, retail outlet one communicates back to A uh, communicates back to the company that okay hey so on this particular day or across the past one year over the past one year I sold so much so this when this was my sales so so how does ABC know that and, and the only way to understand it and the only way to effectively and efficiently do that is through uh, is, is by is by building a central data warehouse okay it's, we're not exactly talking about a database here because uh, the idea here is again for management reporting. Management wants to know. Uh, ma management wants to, uh, you know, you know, do analytics on this. Management wants to know which were the regions which 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 contributed the most to the sales of my uh, medicines, uh, across which age groups were my uh, medicines the biggest hit. So management wants to fire select queries, and for select queries, you're basically doing a data warehouse. So essentially, the idea is to build one central data warehouse. Okay. So from multiple different source systems, your data is coming in to ABC, and ABC is building a data warehouse, uh, a data warehouse on a single platform. And this this part is important. You are basically building a data warehouse on a single platform. Data warehouse is ultimately a database, and as as I showed you here, you know it it's basically a kind of a database which you maintain in a SQL Server or an Oracle or whichever system that you take. Okay. So so the idea here is that although you have data coming in from different kinds of uh, systems different data formats you're converting everything into a SQL server data warehouse I'm just I'm just considering an example of a SQL server data warehouse as an example okay and which is something I've highlighted here this is what you're building this is company ABC and company ABC decides to build its own SQL server data warehouse that's what that's what I've showed you in the cylinder right so you, again you have data from multiple formats Come, retail outlet one two three four five six you can have different retail outlets you, you're basically bringing in all that data you're doing ETL and this is the part which we call ETL we call it extract transform and load uh, extract what, what does extract mean extract means that you're extracting that data from the source system that's extract right you're extracting from the source you're extracting from the source transformation means that you're doing some kind of transformation on your data 
right? The T stands for the transformation, and transformations could be anything. Transformations could be uh, something like, let's say, you have names, right? You have, you, have, you have a name of a person, and you want to convert that name into capital letter. Let's say there's a, there's a business requirement based on which typically mobile numbers come. Uh, typically, mobile numbers come uh, uh, like, let's say, there's, there's a country code that is added, like there's a plus four four or plus nine one or plus seven zero. There's a country code that always precedes a mobile number. And as part of a business, so and and what company and what retail outlet one does is uh, when they store their data in an Excel file, they basically store that data along with that country code. Okay, so so uh, let's say when when uh, retail outlet two stores this data, it doesn't store the country code. When it allows, let's see, three stores that data. Each stores that data in a completely different format. Okay, let's say it, it has phone numbers as uh, numbers, which which is ideally not the case. Phone number should be a character data, right? So so again, what I'm highlighting here is that you have data which is present in different different varieties, right? So the E part, the extract part, is just going to extract the data, but it is only the T part, the transformation part, which is going to try to bring some kind of similarity across the different data formats. It is going to try to Take those multiple different data formats and try to convert them to a single unified data format. So essentially, if you have if, if you have phone numbers which are stored in different ways across all the different systems, you're going to define a unified convention uh, along with business. Okay, this is how we're going to store phone numbers, and that is how you're going to do your transformation in T part. And finally, you're going to load the L stands for load to a data warehouse. That's that we put. And this is exactly what we performed using SSIS, different transformations that you used. And if you can recall our discussion on derived column transformation, or some of the conditional splits that, and all of it was about making sure that you, that you know you're able to convert uh, different kind of formats into one single format, okay, for for a proper load into a sequence of a data warehouse, okay. So this is the part of the ETL and SSI step, and just to just to take a quick uh, digression at this step, and just to show you uh, kind of some of the examples of transformations. Talking about our transformations, and just, just to just to quickly show you there's another Excel sheet that I prepared here, and um, take an example here. This is what I was exactly mentioning. So you can have you can have two tables here. You have two tables. Uh, you can see the first table. This this let's say this is this is retail outlet one. Let's assume that this is retail outlet one. Uh, retail outlet one's data is stored in an Excel file. It's an Excel sheet that is stored this data in, and it maintains gender as male, female, male. Okay, it it calls gender as male, female, male, and then you have retail outlet two, which also has the exact same three columns, but then it calls its gender as M F F. Which is very very evident, isn't it? Because these are diff these are different retail stores. You know, something can be based in different geographical parts of the world, and they they will have their own conventions. Okay, and I'm I'm calling calling a retail outlet. These could be entire departmental stores altogether. Okay, this can even be something like a Walmart, which has its own you know OLTP setup and other other things, right? So the different different organizations will have their own different formats. And and what I want to do is, and as you can see that here, gender is either M or F, right? It could be anything. This is the business convention that you define. This is the convention that you're defining. So when you're pulling in data from this table and this table, when you're pulling in data from retail outlet one and two, and you're loading that into your uh, organizational enterprise data warehouse, you are defining your set of business rules, and these are what your business rules are. That all right, so my gender is going to be either an M or an F. So uh, now all you have to do is, and you can understand, it's a very simple transformation that you will do, right? So, and what is the transformation that you can do here? You can simply do a derived column transformation, right? So you can you can simply do a derived column. Use use a ternary operator. We we've, we've talked about this, right? It's a simple ternary operator you can use, a question mark and semicolon. Uh, question mark and colon, and you can give a condition. If my gender is equal to male, then it is M. Else, it is F. Right? Simple con check you can do to transform. That's a transformation stage. So extract, transform, and load. That's your ETL part. Okay? And country without country code. It's again a very simple thing that you can do. All you can do is um, you, you can simply do a substring because ultimately it's a character, right? When you're reading data from an Excel file, it's a character. So what you can do is you can do a substring, or you can use the uh, you can probably use the write function. Then you can if you go to derive column again in derive column transformation, you'll find something called a write function. And what the write function does is uh, it'll ask you for the field name. So basically, your field name is going to be contact, and 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 it's going to be like contact comma. You can be doing contact comma ten. So it's going to take the rightmost ten characters. Okay. Similarly, of the left function, left left function will take the leftmost ten characters. So that that's how you can that's how you can trim the country code and other such irrelevant details from your contract. Okay, this is what I wanted to highlight about transformation.
Now coming to the final steps of reporting. Now once my data warehouse is ready, what 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 I need to do is I need to do reporting, right? Because that's the end objective. That that's what the data warehouse is built for, right? I need to I need to be able to do efficient reporting on top of whatever data warehouse I created. So you can either do reporting straight away from an Excel file, and this is something I've already showed you. I've showed you how to connect Excel to a data warehouse. You can simply open up an Excel sheet. You can go to uh, you can go to data other sources. You can connect to a data warehouse. You can directly do reporting from here which is absolutely fine, okay? And it's not only Excel, you can have other reporting tools. You can have something like uh, um, SSRS. You can have SSRS also directly connect to an SQL Server data warehouse to generate reports. You can have uh, Tableau connect to SQL Server data warehouse directly. So you can, you, this, 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 uh, up to this point, things are all and also reporting and directly do reporting from it. But the other, the other uh, intermediate step And the fundamental reason for building the cube is uh, to ensure that you 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 have your aggregates are pre-calculated. Aggregations take a lot of time, just as I said for joins. Joins take a lot of time. Aggregations also take a lot of time because if you have your fact table which has rows in billions of rows, and if you have to do a group by and if you do a sum across all the different permutations and combinations of different attributes which are possible, okay? Because there are so many possibilities. You can just think about it. I mean, if you just look at seven dimension tables, and each dimension table has four attributes. Uh, each dimension table has four attributes. You have a total of 28 attributes and for 28 attributes each attribute combination you can think of the aggregation that you would take okay leaving out the key columns okay you can have to think of okay so sum of sales for each region comma year sum of sales for each region comma month sum of sales for each for each region comma month comma year sum of sales for each region comma month comma year comma quarter sum of sales for each region comma gender comma month comma year so you can just think of so many different kinds of uh, permutations and combinations that are possible for aggregations and and that is what a cube is basically used for it it, it, it stores those aggregates in advance so, and that's why we call pre-calculated aggregates. So th th those things are already stored in the cube. So next time when you want to uh, fetch some data and some aggregated data, you can directly get it super fast in, 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 in almost in very fast uh, turnaround time uh, from the cube. Okay, so that's the that's the intermediate step that we create. And this is something that you create using SSAs. And again, you can use the OLAP cube to directly connect to Excel or SSRS or Tableau or any other reporting or visualization tool for that matter, and you can directly uh, create charts and graphs from it. Okay, and one of the only major benefits here is that you have improved performance. Okay, we talked about this. I basically wanted to highlight the OLTP. You have so many different tables, and essentially it becomes a mess. And what I was trying to say here is, uh, in a typical OLTP system, you know things become very, very complicated. You have hundreds and thousands, uh, literally hundreds. I won't say thousands, but then uh, typically hundreds of tables compared to a simple data. Again, so something that we that we'll again talk about uh, once I once I discuss a little bit about data uh, facts and dimension tables is that for each fact table and for each dimension table load, essentially for each table load when you're when you're transferring data from source to staging, source to staging, and so on, for for each of these instances, you will have separate packages. Okay, you will have separate packages. If you have four tables here, you will have four tables created in your SQL Server. You will have four different packages defined for that. And again, for, for four of those tables, if, you, if you're creating, let's say, uh, three, two fact tables and one dimension table, that's like two plus one, three, so three packages. Two packages for the for the dimension tables and one package for the fact table. So, so, the, so the thumb rule is that we typically create uh, separate packages for fact tables and dimension tables each. Okay, so the two dimension tables, you'll have, you'll create two, two separate packages for each dimension table. Okay, it's a thumb rule. Again, it's not I mean, it's something that we follow, but then uh, things could be different as well. Okay, but but then please please keep in mind that everything, whatever you do, everything is fine is triggered from one master package. So you, you have separate packages for uh, the different components, the different uh, workflows, but then you have one master package from which all those individual packages are triggered. And how do you do that? Execute package task, right? We we all understand how to execute execute package task. You can take a master package, and from from that master package, all that will control contain the control flow is all those execute package tasks. Okay, so the first execute package task will be, okay, so execute package this to this, execute package this to this, execute package this to this, execute package this to this. And once all that is over, you'll probably put, put all of that inside a, inside a, um, uh, probably call a container, okay, you put that inside a container, sequence container will be the right thing to use here, because you want to make sure that everything is successfully completed, and after that, only once the source to staging is successfully completed, only then will you want to move from staging onto a destination. 
right? Then you will go back and slowly start to have separate packages, package calls again using execute package tasks from each staging table onto the corresponding destination tables. Okay, so that is how we broadly implement this as part of our uh, as part of our SSIS project. Okay. All right. So. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to cover you. The idea here is to, again, to highlight the importance of uh, uh, the complete framework. And MSBI, of course, is something that I initially started off saying is um, the overall workflow remains very similar for different ETL tools. So uh, depending on what you use, whether you use Informatica, Data Stage, whatever you use, the, the broad workflow remains the same. What well, the initial modeling happens for uh, way back in, way in advance, OK? And when I talk about modeling, the modeling phase is where you actually identify uh, what are your fact tables, what are your dimension tables. So all this while I'm saying that you're loading data from your source onto your destination data warehouse, but then uh, where do you load that data? You will load data either into your fact table or a dimension table, and where you load that data really depends on how you have modeled your data warehouse, and which is something that you do uh, as the very first step. So even before you start all this, all of this, uh, at, the, at the very beginning of the project, you will go back and you will try to you will try to model your data warehouse. Okay, and you basically sit with the business, try to understand, you know, uh, what is it that they want to achieve, what are the reporting needs, because the fundamental purpose of building a data warehouse is to answer analytical queries. And again, this is going back to the to the initial thing that I've highlighted. You can see it. It. it this is what this is what you. It is ideally suited for for its complete support for all analytical queries. So that's the that's the first step that is undertaken uh, before building a data warehouse. So understand what kind of queries you want to answer, and it is based on that that you design a data warehouse. And only once you design a data warehouse is where you can kick off that ETL process. Okay, now because now you know how to map that corresponding source table, that corresponding OLTP Excel file or, a, or an OLTP source table onto that corresponding fact table or a dimension table, right? So that's about an overview. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPad.